All right, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the Spoken Truth Podcast. I go by the name of Danny. I'm Chaz. And today we're going to be getting into the conference semifinals. What's going on? The first couple of games that has happened in each series, we're going to dive into those series individually and give you guys our perspective on those series so far. Uh, Chaz, let's start with the Eastern Conference because we saw Boston come out in game one and, you know, kind of take control of that situation. Uh, in a third quarter, it seemed like that they took control of that game. But we saw last night, or uh, well, well, it was last night, that um, Miami, I mean, I'm sorry, I said Miami. Uh, I don't know why I'm thinking of that. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like a lot. It feels a lot like when Miami won game two. It really do. Because Miami, I mean, it seemed like Boston, you know, they have problems with, you know, the, the teams like Miami. Mm -hmm. Um, but you saw um you saw them come out yesterday and get thoroughly outplayed and get thoroughly dominated in that game yesterday. Um, and there's been a lot of speculation and a lot of chatter, I should say, going around the league, you know, involving Chase and Tatum and, you know, kind of the perspective that the media have for him and, you know, kind of like media personalities have, um, you know, their thoughts when it's pertaining to him. Um, first of all, Chaz, what do you think of, of that series so far? And what are your perspectives on if they get past uh, this this round? you know, them going forward and facing a team potentially like the Timberwolves. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to overreact to a game two loss. You know, as we saw in round one, the Celtics, you know, they, they might have one slip up, but you don't really expect them to do it, you know, multiple games in a row. I am a little bit worried about Boston last few years in the playoffs. They're just about 500 at home, which is worrisome, especially for a team like that. Um, and then obviously with Porzingis being out for at least a few more weeks, I feel like that is something that you kind of have to think about when you're talking about, is this team the actual favorite? I do think they're going to be able to get through Cleveland. Obviously, they win game one by like 25 points, lose game two by, I think, 24 last night. It's not a good sign, but we're going to see. I think they're going to bounce back in Cleveland. Um, I would expect Boston to win game three. I think game four is probably going to be the decider in the series. If Cleveland can find a way to protect home court in that, maybe we could see this series go six or seven. Um, but I'm not really ready to write off the Celtics yet. I know they have some issues right now, um, but I think kind of every team does right now. The Timberwolves are the team that has looked the best, I think, throughout the playoffs, obviously the only undefeated team, but everybody has their flaws. So I'm not going to overreact to one Celtics loss. As we saw in, in round one, they can bounce back better than anybody. Yeah, I I think the deciding factor is it seemed like that, you know, the Celtics have these clunker games at least once every every series yeah. um where they seem to get thoroughly outplayed and dominated by a team that to be quite frank honest with you is they're far out you know they're as far as talent and as far as where we perceive them to go that they're better um but i don't think cleveland i don't think cleveland is uh a team to take lightly i don't think cleveland is a team that you could just be able to walk over and to look over. And I think that's showing in its rearing his ugly head on the Boston Celtics because we all expect Boston to be in the NBA championship and to be competing for the NBA championship in the NBA finals. Um, so I think the perspective that, you know, with the Persingas, the injury, and them not being able to kind of seemingly jail at some points of you know and not just this season but in previous seasons you know getting it right at the right time um is starting to show in the most important stretches and in the most important games of the season um and it's and it questions jason tatum leadership it questions you know the front office the dynamic it questions you know, the $300 million man that is Jalen Brown now and soon to be Jason Tatum. So it brings it to dy dynamics. The question is if they lose or not even if they lose, you know, just this this series, because I don't think they're going to lose. But if they face a Timberwolf team and we thoroughly expect, you know, Denver to, you know, beat um, Boston, well, at least I do. I will. I believe Denver would have beaten Boston if they would have got to that point. But since it's looking like a team like the Timberwolves, if they still can't get it done, that 
that raises even more questions. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Um, and I also agree with your point that I don't think the Cavaliers are a team to take lightly. Um, I think we're both kind of saying the same thing that we do think the Celtics get out of this, but it's not going to be easy. This isn't round one when you're playing a Miami team without, you know, two of their four best players with Jimmy Butler and Terry Rozier out. You know, this this Cavaliers team has a guy like Donovan Mitchell who's a bona fide, you know, one of the probably top 10 to 15 best scorers in the entire league. Um, and he showed yeah. that last night. I thought he was phenomenal, especially in the third quarter and carried that into the early and the fourth to kind of separate them. Um, but I think this Cavaliers team is a lot better when they have guys like Darius Garland and Evan Mobley playing well. You know, we saw a lot in that Orlando series. It was Donovan Mitchell doing a lot by himself. You know, game seven, yeah. Magic down eight, or I'm sorry, Magic up 18. The Cavaliers looked like they're going to lose that game at home. And then Donovan Mitchell pretty much by himself. You know, he had help from Karis LeVert, Max Struess, guys like that. But Garland was basically a no-show in game seven. And Mobley played well, but he wasn't scoring. Last night against the Celtics, Mobley had his career high in the playoffs. Garland hit a multiple threes, so he was a lot better. You know, when they have all three of those guys clicking without Jared Allen on the floor, I think they might have a chance to steal maybe one more game against the Celtics. So I'm not trying to take the Cavaliers lightly. Um, I just think it's it's hard to imagine them actually winning this series. Okay. So you don't think no matter what that Cleveland can win this series? I mean, I never want to say never, but I think it would have to take something drastic. I will say that the Celtics, especially without Porzingis, they need Derek White, at least one of Derek White or Drew Holiday to score. And Holiday mm -hmm. has played well throughout the playoffs, but he hasn't scored really at all. I think he's had more games in single digits than double. And Derek White has been great in the playoffs, but last night I think he was like one of eight from three and only had 10 points. So they, they rely on those guys. And then, like you said, I think Tatum's been good in the playoffs. He hasn't been great, though. You know, in round one, Jalen Brown and Derek White scored more points than Tatum. And then Tatum, I think he had a team high 25 last night, but he never really took over any moment. So you kind of expect that a player of his caliber. I think the one of the I think the one of the most disappointing things that I'm seeing is that this was his opportunity with a Steph not in the playoffs, with a LeBron not in the playoffs, with a, a Kevin Durant not in the playoffs, with a Giannis not in the playoffs. This was the perfect opportunity for him to be like on center stage being, you know, other than Nikola Jokic, um, you can make argument he is was supposed to be the second best player in the playoffs right now. Um, as far as where we're ranking the best players in the world. Obviously Nikola Jokic is the best player in the world. Um, but as far as we're saying, you know, the Jalen Brunson's of the world, um, Anthony Edwards of the world, the Carl Anthony Towns of the world, you know, those guys have surpassed him in this in, in these playoffs. As you know, as at least for right now, as a better player. Um, now, obviously, that change that can change, you know, through the course of this series, and depending on how far they go. But he's averaging twenty one points in 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 the postseason. Um, it's just very disappointing. I, I would say it's very disappointing. Yeah, you would expect a player like him to be spectacular, like you said. A lot of the other guys um, that we view kind of right in that tier below him have actually outperformed him so far. Um, yeah. we can move on, but real quick, who do you have winning game three and how deep does this series go? I got Boston winning game three. I think it goes to six. That's kind of what I was leaning towards too. I think, I think Boston takes a stranglehold of the other series, um, mm -hmm. in game three. And like I said, it's going to come down to can the Cavs win game four somehow and force this. Um, I originally picked Boston and Four, I believe. I think I had a sweep. Um, I think I had them sweeping in the first round too, actually. So um, I am kind of overranking the uh, Celtics so far, but I'll say that they close this out in five. I, I say that they win the next three. Okay. Well, coming up, guys, we're going to get into one of the the most entertaining series um, in this round, the New York Knicks and the Indiana Pacers. Coming up next. <laughs> 